All right, so we'd like to work towards having monsters and gold and other items uh, into these rooms. Uh, but the problem that we have right now is we've hard-coded our rooms. So this is where we set up our, our map, and it's all hard-coded. So we, we're not actually storing the information about this room. We don't know, first off, we don't know what room we're in. We don't even know that's a room. We just know that... Uh, when we hit up, we can move there. When we hit up, we can move there. When we hit up, we can't move there. We have no information about, are we in room one? Are we in room two? How big is the room? How many monsters does the room have? Etc. Etc. So how we're going to fix that is by using a struct. Structs are wonderful. So, at the top, type def struct room room and the data that we're going to want to store in this struct is an int x position an int y position just like with the player uh, so this will be the top left uh, coordinate so up here that'll be our x y position for the room then we're also going to want int height, how tall the room is, and int width, how wide the room is. And then I'm also going to put some other stuff in here. We're not going to use it right now, but we'll use monster, star monsters, uh, sorry, star star. So an array of pointers to monsters. And item star star items so we're going to create a struct for an item and for monsters and then we'll be able to store all that information uh, so each room will keep track of how many what monsters it has and and things like that but for now we'll be, uh, we'll just comment those out but that's that's kind of where we're going with this Okay, so now we want to modify our map setup to save this information. So we're going to want a function create room. And this map setup, it's going to return room star star, so an array of rooms. Um, so we need to modify that. So map setup room star star and then we're gonna have a couple room functions so we'll just kind of comment those out again we're going to, have to break this all these functions and definitions up soon with dot h files but for now we can just keep going so room star create room and this will just create a room now the arguments it's going to take is int x, int y, int height, and int width. So that's going to be our create room. And let's put it down here for now. So when we call it, we're going to want to pass it the x position. Again, n curses does y, x, so that's kind of confusing. But anyways, uh, so the x position is going to be this one here. Should probably switch that around, but whatever. And the y position for this room is going to be there, so 13. And then its height will be... So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... It's got a height of six, and I think it's got a width of eight, if you count all these. So six and eight. Now, so this is gonna return a room. This create room is gonna return a room. Now this is gonna turn an array of rooms. So we need to declare an array of rooms. So how we're gonna do that is 
room star star rooms simple enough rooms equals malloc size of room times six yep and then when we create call this create room function it's going to return a room and we're going to store it in this array up here so rooms zero equals create room okay so now let's write our create room function so uh, we declare a new room room new room which is a, a pointer should be and then we malloc it so new room equals malloc size of room and then we'll just assign all the values so new room x position equals x new room y position equals y new room width or height equals height new room width equals width and I think that's it for now eventually we'll have monsters and gold but we don't have that right now so then we just return the new room Okay, so now we can copy and paste this and reuse it. So here the starting position is 40 and 2. And here it's 40 and 10. And then we have to change these, obviously. Okay, so now if, if that's working right, we should now have an array of, oh, we wanna return that uh, array. So return rooms, I don't think right now it's not being saved as anything, but that's okay. Not to worry about that. Um, so we want to draw these rooms too. So that's the next function we want to create is draw room, and we'll just pass it the room, and then instead of hard coding all of these lines this function will do it for us. So that will allow us to randomly generate rooms and cool stuff like that. So down here, uh, this is gonna be int, draw room, and it's just gonna take a pointer to a room. A nice simple function. Copy and paste that up here. Returns one on success. Okay, now we're gonna have a bunch of for loops in here. So, I'm gonna want int x and int y. Okay, so first thing we're gonna draw is we're going to draw top and bottom. It's gonna be a for loop. We're gonna say for x, which is just the counter variable that we declared. For x equals, we're gonna set it equal to the room 
x position. And while x is less than room x position plus width, plus room width. Uh, so what that's doing is it's saying it's starting x is equal to this position here. And then while we're going to loop through all these spots until we get to here. So we're basically going for the entire width of the room. And increment x, obviously. And then we will do our move print w and room y position for the y coordinate and then x for the x position. And we're just going to draw that symbol. Okay, so that's going to be the top. And down here is going to be the bottom. So the only thing that we need to change is for our y position, it's going to be the y position plus height, room height. And that should, uh, should draw the top and bottom. Let's actually uh, test this. We've done quite a bit of coding, so let's, let's test it, recompile, and see if it runs. Uh, so basically we still need to, um, we don't need this anymore. So just comment it out, control backslash, forward slash, whatever it is, control forward slash to comment all those lines out. Try again. Okay, so it is printing. Why is that the same? Uh... Oh, this should be wider. This one here is six, but I think it's 10 across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, it's 12. So that should be 12. Okay, so I think also another problem is that this is, should be getting drawn up on this line here, but uh, let's just, let's keep going and then we'll fix it when we get, when we see the problem. Okay, now we need to draw the floors. So, draw floors and side walls. So this is gonna be a nested for loop. So the first the outer loop is going to be y equals room y position um, plus one. And then this is going to be y is less than room y position plus room height. Y plus plus. And then move print W. So we're going to draw here we're going to draw the side walls. Draw side walls. And with this with this uh, leave that out for now we're gonna put it back in but let's leave it out for now what this is gonna do is oh wait no we want plus one so yeah plus one what this will do is so this is our x y position so y position plus one is gonna put us right here yeah 
Okay, so then if we go to this, this y is equal to that position. So we go to y and then room, go to the x position and this will be right here. So y, x, and then the room x position is right there. So we'll go to that spot and draw the pipe, which is the side wall. And we're gonna use that again, but now for the x position, we are going to add on the width. So the room width, and that will bring us to here. Uh, so let's just run that. Yes. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going one too far. Uh, so take away one. Okay, so we have all that working now. Um, but we still want to draw the floors, all those dots. So we do, it's another for loop. And this one is going to start, and use x equals room x position plus one. while x is less than room x position plus room width minus one, because uh, we don't want to, we don't want to go into here, we just want to go to here. And then obviously x plus plus, increment x each time. And then move print w. And this is just gonna be a nice simple y, x, a dot. So here we're drawing our floors, draw floors. All right, so let's see if that works. And it does. And I think it's too, it's supposed to be six tall. And we've got, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's too tall. Which is weird because it's only this one. No, wait. Yeah, no, it's all of them. So it's just supposed to be six tall and it's got seven instead. So let's see why that is. Um, so firstly here, this is, this is going too far. So plus room height minus one. I'll stop that. And then here as well, room height minus one. There we go. Okay, so now we have all our room information stored in these structs. Well, we're still not returning it. Um, but we, we've started down that path. Or we're returning it, we're just not saving it while we call map set up. Um, but what that does is it means that we can randomly generate the sizes of these rooms. So if, let's say we have different levels, we can just randomly generate the positions of the room, the sizes of the rooms. And then also we're gonna be able to store information such as which monsters are in which room, which items are in which room. Uh, we can even, here, we can put uh, room, star room for our player. And then when we create our player, we can uh, store which room our player is in. Uh, we're not using that right now, so let's we'll comment it out. but. That's something that we now can do. So, uh, yeah, pretty big, pretty big step there.